Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode, number 26, is a continuation from last week where I responded to Kristen from Scrap Fabric Love's video. I want to show you why I love my Bernina 770. We're going to pause for a moment. Let's get to the machine. The first thing I like about the Bernina 770 are these jumbo bobbins. They're huge. They hold tons of thread and they're super easy to wind. So the silver marks go down. I'm going to put it on the bobbin winder face down. I take my thread, put it through the thread guide around this little post and then over to the bobbin. Wind around a couple times. Try not to get my left arm in front of the camera. That's a, that's a thread cutter. And then you just go like this and it winds. Now if this is only going at uh, 60 some percent of the speed, but now I told it to go all the way. It'll continue winding until it's full and then it just stops. You don't have to put your foot on the gas. It just winds. Just another second here, it should be done. Okay, so now you can use this thread cutter again. Same as the silver marks going down up on the bobbin winder, the silver marks go down into the bobbin. Super easy in the slot. And I showed this before. I just pop this right in. And it's ready to go. Now I have to thread. And I want you to watch this. This is so fast and so easy. You just follow the arrows. And it's got a semi-automatic needle threader. You are threaded. How easy is that? You never care if you have to keep changing thread colors because it's just so fast. What else I like about this is the um, tie-off feature. When I start, if I've used the tie-off before, this will tie off. See how it's stitching in place? Now it goes. There's a scissors function. It ties it off. There's none of that backwards forward stuff that you used to have to do to knot the ends. And if you don't want the tie off feature, you can turn it off. People who do foundation paper piecing, they oftentimes don't like the tie off feature. You turn it off. Super easy. Another thing that I love about these machines are these D feet. I don't know if you can see this very well, but there's a piece that engages down here that makes the top fabric feed at the same rate of speed as the feed dogs move the bottom fabric. I use it all the time for piecing. I, it does not replace the walking foot, but it makes your piecing absolutely beautiful talked before in the earlier video about how I love the single hole plate. With the single hole, it um, doesn't let your fabric get smushed down into the oval hole. So I love that. Um, those are the main features in this part of the video. I want to focus in on the screen because I think the screen here is um, really intuitive and easy to follow, easy to use. So we'll just pause for a second and zoom in. I think this screen is so easy to follow, easy to use. If you start at the top left, that is your thread tension. And if you need to change it, you can go hit it and then you can either go up or down, wherever you want it, or you can hit the plus or the minus, just get it to where you want it, and then you can X out. Um, this is the, the foot. 
This machine will not change what foot is shown here. There is the upgrade available, which is different than a software update. It's an upgrade that's available for purchase. I have not put it on this machine yet, but if I did, this uh, foot would change based on um, what foot you have on the machine. This is the foot pressure, which you can make higher or lower depending on what kind of fabric you're using. You can use these plus minus. You can use the just pushing and touching the screen either way. I got it at 50. I'm going to leave it at 50. This is what throat plate you have on. We've talked about that before. I have the zero plate on, so I want to make sure that the machine knows I have the zero plate on. I do not want to tell the machine that I have a different throat plate on it than I actually have on it, because that can cause problems. This lets you know that your feed dogs are up. If you want to do free motion quilting, you want to lower your feed dogs. There's a button over here, if I can feel it from here. Oh, I can't quite feel it. But if I did get it pushed in, oh wait, is it there? Oh, there we got it. So see now they're yellow and it shows that the, the zigzaggy looking thing, those are the feed dogs, are underneath. So then when I press it back in, the zigzag is above the line and that means that the feed dogs are up. This is your bobbin thread. It'll start to flash and indicate that you're getting low. And when you run out of bobbin thread, the machine will stop and let you know that you're out of bobbin thread. On this side are the different folders of all the different stitches. So we're on this top one, which is the practical stitches. So you've got zigzag, um, the serpentine we use a lot. Um, I think, is that the triple stitch. I'm not sure. I'd have to get out the book to tell you all the names of these stitches, but there's a lot of them. So right now, since I have the zero millimeter plate on, um, it won't let me do, like, it won't let you do the number eight because that's wider than zero. So I'd have to change the plate to be able to do this stitch, but you can refer to your manual to see the names of all the different stitches here. This next one down are fancy stitches, and there's all these folders where you can find all these other stitches to do. This is um, one thing that I did in the embellishment um, issue that I always try to find uses for some of these fancy stitches, and there's tons of them. You could sit and stitch these out forever. There's, there's just more than I can even think of uses for, but I'm always trying. Here's alphabets. There's different alphabets that you can put on. I've used these alphabets to um, sew a baby's name onto a um, baby quilt where you don't want to do a whole full out embroidery, but you just want to maybe put the baby's name or you could just put the month and year that the baby was born. There's all kinds of different buttonholes you can do. Buttonholes are super easy. I'm not a garment sewer, so I haven't done a ton of um, button making, but buttonhole making. But I, when I have done it, I just pull out the manual, follow the instructions, and they come out perfectly. This next one here are the patchwork feet. You can see the blanket stitch is one I use from there. That's one that kind of looks like stippling. Um, Here's like a little feather stitch. There's all different stitches that uh, patchwork people use, and those are all in that section. And then any stitch you like, you can put into your own folder. You hit the heart, and you say, I want to put that stitch in this folder. So I put it in the folder. Then let's say I want to pull it out again. You hit this, and you can pull them out of that folder. Really easy. In the folder, out of the folder. And the other option is the garbage. If the stitch is there and you don't like it, you throw it into the garbage. And that's fine. So that's the right side. Let's go back here. Let's go back to the practical stitches because that's always where I am. Um, now the bottom part, 
this is the home which you go to if you're going to do um, switch to say embroidery. I'm on regular stitching now. I want to do embroidery. Then I need to hit here, and it's probably going to tell me, yeah, I need to lower the feed dogs and and add the um, embroidery module. But we're not going to do that now. I'm just showing you that's where it is. Then the, the settings. This is the one I use the most, and I've shown you some parts of this before. You can change settings on your straight stitches, um, how many tie-offs you want. There's a program to, to um, decide what you want to do if you back kick your foot pedal. There's just all kinds of things in here that you can do. This is embroidery issues that you can decide different settings for. It's all in the manual. You can find out what you like, play with it. And then I forget what this one is. Oh, yeah, the background color. Big deal. You can change the background color if you don't like the blue. Um, this is an important one. This you can turn off the top sensor. You can turn off the bottom sensor if you need to, if it's going off and you don't want it going off. Um, you can change these. The most of the time when I use the top one, it's because I have too thin of a thread that the top sensor can't see it sound. We've talked about the sound before. I actually turned off the sound in the last video, turning the sound back on. Yeah, see, you just heard it beep. It hasn't beeped before because I have the sound off. This is an important one. I've shown you this before where you can see what software version you have. This is here. When I do put in the upgrade to this machine, this is where I do it. Um, what else do we have? Is there some, oh, no, that's not the one I want. Um, this calibrates the screen. If something's going wrong, you calibrate the screen. Here's tools. Um, this is the update, software update. You can um, calibrate your buttonhole foot. This cleans out the thread cutter. This tells you how to do the oil, I think. Let's see what this tells me. Yeah, it tells you how to do your oil, which is super easy. I showed that the last time, but you've got a video here of it. So there's all kinds of things in that settings. And, you know, we talk about everybody likes something different. So just because I have mine set one way doesn't mean it's the right way. You have to set it for the way you like it. This is a tutorial. You can hit what you, if you need help on any of these things, you can just hit this and learn more about it. This is the creative consultant, which I never use, um, but it gives you help on different things. And then the eco mode I use all the time. Um, when we get up, a customer comes in, we're sewing, you can just hit the eco mode and then it um, shuts down until you're ready to sew again. Instead of turning the machine on and off, you just hit the eco mode. And then there's always clear when you are got something in there that you don't want anymore. Just go ahead and hit clear. So that pretty much covers the screen. I think it's super easy to use, very intuitive. And um, I just love this machine. Uh, a couple things I didn't cover. Um, oh, I missed this. This is needle up, down. That's now when you stop, the needle would stop up. I always keep the needle stopped down. And I didn't show, and I don't think you can see it in the camera because we're focused all on the screen, but it does have many different needle positions. I can't remember if it's 9 or 11, but um, over here you can move the needle right and left, but it won't go now because I have the 0 millimeter plate on. But you can adjust that. So all in all, I think this is an easy machine to use. There is a learning curve. If you need help, please seek it out. If you go to your dealer, if you don't have a dealer because you bought it from a private party, then go to YouTube videos. Call Bernina Jeff, email me. Um, you know, we're, we're here. We want our Bernina owners to be happy. So that's it for now. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, happy sewing.